Using the Goldman Emotional Intelligence Criteria, as well as a frame based on Machiavelli's The Prince, we will explore Job's personal and professional lives, specifically his family and spirituality, as well as his need for control, which manifested itself in his infamous intensity and his so-called reality distortion field, as well as his lifelong commitment to Apple's closed system philosophy. It will be shown that Jobs had a superior capacity for emotional intelligence, but he would often use it for his own ends. This speaks to his larger Machiavellian nature and how he did whatever it took to maintain his power at Apple, in the form of his control over products and how this behavior had a negative impact on his interpersonal relationships. In What Makes a Leader, Daniel Goleman presents this criteria for what he calls emotional intelligence or EQ which is essentially a list of categories that highly successful leaders often excel in. The list goes like this, self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and social skill. Goldman's research has shown that while cognitive skills and IQ are important to success, emotional intelligence can be equally important, if not more so. Jobs insists repeatedly that his volatile personality is who I am and you can't expect me to be someone I'm not. But is this true? It seems as though Job's personal and private lives showed glimpses of emotional intelligence with varying consistency. However, these behaviors were overshadowed at times by his Machiavellian nature. In The Prince, Niccolo Machiavelli offers his views on how an individual looking to maintain power in a monarchy should conduct themselves. The most prominent guidelines are, it is better to be feared than loved, avoid being hated except during a war, a capable leader must be cunning, People will inevitably lie to you, so it is okay to lie to them, and the ends justify the means. When thought of more generally, the prince can be seen as an examination of human nature and how to possibly understand and react to it. This is where the true conflict of the prince lies. Why it seems like Machiavelli flip-flops on so many of his ideas and his motivations behind claiming that these harsher me measures are necessary. The book is essentially about balancing kindness with cruelty, which could be considered a reflection of the struggle that takes place inside of every person. This will also be explored when examining Job's life. His reliance on intuition and avoidance of annoyances on real-world problems may have allowed him to push Apple forward, but hindered him in personal relationships. Steve Jobs was born on February 24, 1955, and was immediately put up for adoption. Jobs' distance from his biological parents at a young age seems to have laid a foundation for his general outlook on life. Isaacson describes it as abandoned, chosen, special. It seems as though his tendency to completely close off and ignore parts of his life can be traced back to these feelings of abandonment. Jobs chose to view his situation as a dichotomy. His adopted parents were kind and instilled in him a feeling that he was special, and his biological parents were nothing more than a sperm and an egg. These experiences seem to be when Jobs began to be more selective when using his EQ. When Jobs and Chrisanne moved into their ranch house, he immediately became distant and disconnected in order to avoid dealing with Chrisanne in the pregnancy. This gives the impression that he was willfully ignoring any of his emotional intelligences. It is also where his famous reality distortion field began to rear its head. This tactic worked well for motivating his team at Apple to make truly outstanding products, but it served to ruin his relationships with people in his personal life. Job's relationship with his wife, Laureen Powell, and their children were much more positive, but still not ideal. His son Reed is described as being, like his father in many ways, except for a lack of cruelty in his nature. His first daughter, Erin, learned to keep a bit of an emotional distance, so as not to be hurt by his attachment. Their youngest daughter, Eve, was not intimidated and knew how to handle him. It is interesting to note that Isaacson describes all of Job's relationships with his children by how they rack to his difficult personality. These descriptions show how far these selective emotions took over his personal life. The way he let some family into his life and willfully kept others out again show his, shows his ability to use his IQ whenever he thought necessary. Job's relationships are not easily understood. It is clear that he has the capacity to display all of the EQ traits effectively, but again, he seems, willing, he seems to willingly hold it back from people that he is supposed to care about. It is truly bizarre that he behaves in this way. <coughs> chilling even to consider that his lack of care stems from a Machiavellian tendency. There is no clear gain to be had from spending time and energy worrying about family, and so it is foolish to do so. An essential part of Jobs is his spirituality. When he was young, he got into LSD, Buddhism, and the idea of Zen. Jobs credits all of these things for making him more enlightened. This quest for inner peace has been a failure in his personal life. Chrisanne described Jobs like this an enlightened being who was cruel. 
his focus on spirituality may have given him focus in his business life but it did not carry over to his family life his buddhist teaching gave him his appreciation of an aesthetic based on minimalism which would become a hallmark of apple products his claim that he was enlightened went hand in hand with his notion that he was special his spirituality may have been the origin of his reality distortion field his vision seemed to be the only one that mattered a type of righteous self-centeredness that ruined his relationships why should he spend time with his family do they not know what he is building do they not understand that he is changing the world this may be a little harsh but so was jobs he did not like things sugar-coated jobs says that it worked our consciousness was raised by zen and also by lsd of course his actions would reveal that this was not true one could say that it inadvertently made him more machiavellian this lack of care for others based out of his full righteousness and desire to hold his power as the leader of april would naturally produce machiavellian behaviors anyone who did not share his vision was simply not on his level of thought and his cold disconnected treatment of his family gives the impression that he was simply not thinking clearly enough about how his actions might be affecting them jobs defining characteristic is his intensity often he would have tantrums screaming at employees who had let him down or whose work was not up to his standards it was his unrelenting passion for making great products and his desire for control this alludes to another machiavellian trait that was deeply embedded in job's personality lie to others before they can lie to you in job's view it was better to use his reality distortion field so that his employees did not have the opportunity to make excuses jobs warped the reality of those around him to the point where everything he said was possible whether his employees think so or not it is a genius and cunning tactic to eliminate any potential of being taken advantage of by his subordinates perhaps no event in his life was more emblematic of his controlling nature than when he was designing the macintosh he had no patience for excuses and no concern over budgetary constraints indeed his desire for control and his consistent meddling in all aspects of the computer's design including the parts that no consumer would ever see often drove his team to fits even throughout all of this jobs was still able to retain the support of his team in much the same way as machiavelli believed it better to be feared than loved jobs approached his employees with a kind of calculated inten intensity finding the right balance to avoid being hated jobs vision was complete control of the entire experience of his product from how it was designed and made to how it was sold at times it seems clear that jobs was more emotionally invested in his work than he was in his family it would be easy to claim that jobs simply lacks an eq in his professional life as well this however could not be further from the truth in fact jobs was incredibly in tune with other people's emotions and he would use his reality distortion theory to manipulate them into performing what they thought was impossible According to Isaacson, a direct result of Jobs' intensity and desire for control was that it encouraged a binary view of the world, and this black and white mentality can be seen in nearly all aspects of his life. Apple products are a direct reflection of Jobs' desire for a closed system. They only run on proprietary software and are not open to be modified by hackers in any way. He was also not satisfied with simply staying confined to the United States. Machiavelli calls for empires to establish colonies when expanding territory, and as of October 2016, Apple has opened around 486 retail stores in 17 countries. In his quest for the closed system, Jobs again had no concern for sugarcoating anything. He would trample on others to fulfill his vision, and this again indicates a lack of emotional intelligence. It could also be argued, however, that his EQ is so high that it makes him able to take full advantage of a person's strengths, weaknesses and insecurities in order to motivate or destroy them jobs fully felt that it was better to be feared than loved jobs was willing to do whatever was necessary including using his natural ability to read people and use their insecurities against them if this is the case then does he in fact have a high emotional intelligence or not steve jobs is the embodiment of the machiavellian ideology which is to say, he embodies the struggle between good and evil that exists in people. In his professional life, Jobs is what Machiavelli would consider the good side of people. His vision was clear, he actively destroyed any obstacle in his way, and only compromised when it is absolutely unavoidable. For Jobs, the ends always justify the means. He spared no expense, and would use any tactic to motivate his team, from stroking their ego to telling them they were shit, to create a good product. He saved his attention for his professional life and, as has been shown, only used it sparingly in his relationships. He was not a nice person to either his employees or his family, but he managed to almost single-handedly change the world. 
In a Machiavellian world, this is enough to justify his actions. It is difficult to decide whether Job's relentless pursuits of his visions, and the legacy he left behind in doing that, is enough to justify the fundamental flaws in his character. Is it better to be kind or to be successful? If it's both, then where should the line be drawn so that attention to emotional intelligence gives way to Machiavellian cruelty? These are questions about what it means to be a human being. An opinion about Jobs is an opinion of the self. Even after his death, Jobs has managed to affect the world, not necessarily by his achievements, but by how he achieved. His legacy is his products, but it is also the way that he forces people to reflect on their own actions, simply by the way he was.